Hello and welcome to the in-depth series of Drishti IAS. My name is Pooja Devedi. Today we are going to discuss corals, coral reefs, coral bleaching, the causes of the bleaching. What is the importance? What is the why are corals important basically for humans? And what is the threat as well as the conclusion? These many topics are going to be discussed. Let's start with corals. What are corals? These are invertebrate animals. Remember them. To a large, they belong to a large group of colorful and fascinating animals, and it is known as Cinderella. Each coral animal is known as a polyp. This is a polyp, supposedly, and these polyps do not live individually. That one polyp is here, another polyp is there. No, as we know, to protect any species wants to live in colony, so they live in colonies, and the colony formation is known as budding. Okay, and they bud along. That is why. they form a colony now these polyps they have microscopic algae which is known as zooxanthellae so these polyps have zooxanthellae in them now zooxanthellae and the coral polyp they have a very they have a unique relationship and it is known as a mutualistic relationship the polyps help the zooxanthellae to get stuff for photosynthesis and in return the zooxanthellae provide them such material so that they can carbonate their calcium okay so first we can say what is a mutualistic relationship that both the organisms are helping each other in some manner and because of zooxanthellae only the colorful nature of the polyps can be seen now coral reefs of course we know corals now coral reefs are created by millions of tiny polyps which form a long carbonate structure coral reefs are the largest living structure on the planet and interestingly the only living structure that can be seen from the space they live in both shallow less water and deep water reef building corals although if we talk about corals that build reef that means along the shorelines of the continents they can be found only in tropical shallow tropical and shallow subtropical waters okay because the algae which is important zooxanthellae which is important to live in the tissues they need light for photosynthesis and here in this region in designated latitudes only we can find the reef building corals because of that and they prefer water temperatures between 22 to 29 degree celsius moving on there are also deep sea corals and they can be there up to 20000 feet they do not have the same algae like the shallow ones have they do not need sunlight or warm water to survive that is why they grow slow one place to find them is on underwater peak which is which are called as sea mounts okay now three types of reefs are there atoll reef fringing reef and barrier reef atoll reef can be found on the mouth of the volcanoes the, uh, which were actually above water for a period of time when they submerged at the mouth of the volcano the atoll started building itself then fringing reef this is the most common reef okay most common one is fringing and then we have barrier reef which forms on the shoreline such as the great barrier reef of australia now indonesia has the largest coral reef area in the world india maldives sri lanka and chagos they have the maximum coral reef in south asia the great barrier reef of the queensland coast of australia is the largest aggregation of coral reefs they extend to a length of 1931 km they have a width that varies from 16 km to 322 km and this is the most impacted by coral bleaching okay moving on let's talk about coral bleaching see coral bleaching by the name you can say uh, it's it's something like when the corals leak their color okay they do not have their color anymore A healthy coral is a coral in which polyps are there and zooxanthellae they are living happily together okay and they have of course uh, the second part that when any change in temperature of the water pollution occurs degradation of water quality occurs eutrophication occurs in which algae another sort of algae also thrive in the water so that sunlight cannot reach them they become stressed they are in tension that they are not getting the proper nutrients so when that happens the zooxanthellae starts leaving the corals 
Now, when zooxanthellae leaves the corals, what happens? The corals they do not have anything to provide them the food and the color, and hence we see that coral bleaching is done. And these can be maintained; they can be, you know, uh, reclaimed as a healthy coral if we start taking care of them. So, if we are talking about corals, we have to know about zooxanthellae. Remember that zooxanthellae is our friend. Now, let's talk about causes of coral bleaching. When events such as El Nino and marine heat waves occur, there is a specific temperature in which the corals thrive. But if the temperatures change, the corals become stressed. Zooxanthellae leaves them. Extreme low tides. What happens when there are extreme low tides? These corals are exposed to too much sunlight and too much pollution. Then also zooxanthellae says bye bye to corals. Then there is ocean acidification. As we know, oceans sequester carbon dioxide. And because of that, the acidic nature of the water increases. And when that happens, zooxanthellae again says bye bye to the corals. Now the next one is ocean pollution. When too much nutrients go into the water in the form of fertilizer, pesticides, then that can result in growth of phytoplankton. Too much nutrition has gone, and because of that, phytoplankton start occurring. They phytoplankton are here. They will block the sunlight and the poor corals, polyps, they will not get the proper sunlight and then zooxanthellae again will leave them. Anthropogenic threat such as overfishing, fishes are also important to corals and in the net of the fishing, corals get stuck. That is also another problem. Pollution from agriculture and industrial runoff which leads to ocean pollution. Coral mining and development of industrial area around the coral areas is also a threat. Now, if we talk about why is coral health important? In order to maintain proper stock of fish, proper marine and aquatic animals, because many animals, they thrive in corals, it is important that for shelter and food, we maintain these corals. For tourism, such places which are thriving, which have a great thriving coral reef, atolls, fringing reefs, they get a lot of tourists because they are very beautiful in nature. Then fishing, fishing for fishing, of course, there are many fishes that are dependent on corals. If you remove the coral, then fishes will also not live there. That will take a toll on the livelihood of fishermen. Coastline protection, the Great Barrier Reef has protected Australia's coast from many issues. And these reefs are important to break the waves of tsunami like mangroves. So for that also it is important to maintain them. Now, as many as 10% of the coral reefs have degraded and another 30% are likely to disappear within the next 20 years across the globe. According to a study, if proper steps are not taken to conserve the coral reef, all coral reefs of the Indo-Malayan region, they may disappear in the next 40 years. So, it is important to first of all have an integrated coral management plan. That is not only for an area specific, but also for world specific. You can have one policy and then delegate it. Over exploitation of corals should be strictly checked. Then fishing activities which cause damage to corals should also be checked. There should also be a check upon domestic sewage, industrial waste, tourist waste, chemicals and fertilizers. Anchoring of boats in the area where corals are present should also be checked because these anchors can take out the corals all at once. Okay. So I hope you understood all about Coral Reef. That's it. Thank you so much for watching.